In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Christ is in our midst, he was, and is, and ever shall be. In this video, I'd like to briefly address some questions by a Lutheran uh, friend and inquirer about orthodoxy. And the question concerns, what is theosis and how does it relate to justification? That's a, that's a great question because um, it is really what divides orthodoxy from Protestantism in many ways. Our view of salvation is very different from the Protestant conception and misreading of St. Paul. Now, the locus classicus of this teaching is obviously St. Paul's letter to the Romans. In chapter 8, he says in verse 28, We know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. For whom he did foreknow, um, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Now in verse 30, he says more of whom he did predestinate. Now notice this. There is a, an order. More of whom he did predestinate. That's the first. Them he also called, second. And whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. Now, in typical Protestant theology, there is the call to eternal life through the preaching of the word, at which point somebody believes and is justified. And then in the second coming, somebody is glorified. So justification and the calling uh, are fairly contemporaneous and they're not really separate. The orthodox understanding is best typified as seen in the life of Abram, whose name was changed to Abraham. Now, the reason why we focus on this is we, number one, inherit, and Reformed theologians believe this as well, we inherit the same promise as Abraham. Now, in Romans chapter 4, Paul tells us, and he received the sign of circumcision, a seal of the righteousness of the faith which he had. This is this refers to Genesis 17. A seal of the righteousness of the faith which he had being yet uncircumcised. For the promise that he should be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. For if they which are the law be heirs, faith is made void and the promise is made in none effect. Verse 15, because the law works wrath, for no laws there is no transgression. Therefore it is a faith that it might be by grace to the end the promise might be sure to all the seed. Not to them also which are the law, but to them also which are of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. As it is written, and this is Genesis 22, I have made thee a father of many nations before him whom he believed, even God, who quickens the dead and calls those things which be not as though they were. We are, uh, if we read uh, Ephesians chapter 2, joint heirs sin cleronomi. Um, heir is cleronomos. Uh, they receive a lot, kleros. That's where we get the word cleric. We receive a lot, a share in the inheritance of Christ by his testament. His death on the cross obliterated the distinction between Jew and Gentile. And henceforth, to those that are afar off, the, pro the Gentiles, the promise is proclaimed. Now, in the life of Abraham, we need to go back to Genesis and we'll recount and see these steps of salvation fulfilled in him and the process of theosis or glorification as well. So uh, let me go to Genesis 12 here. And let me read the text, Genesis 12, 1. Now the Lord said unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee. Verse 2, and I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. Now this is, uh, sidebar, this is not referring to um, the dispensational pipe dream of a Jewish state of Israel. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse them that curseth thee, and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. 
Now notice this. So Abram departed as the Lord had spoken to him, unto him, and Lot went with him. And Abram was 70 and five years old when he departed out of Haran. Now, compare that with what the Apostle Paul says in Romans, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Hebrews chapter 11. Now, in Hebrews chapter 11, the Apostle Paul says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, this is verse 6, the evidence of things not seen, for by it the elders obtained a good report through faith. By faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are not were made of things which do not appear. And then the scripture goes on and says, and I think it's verse 8, 11, 8, By faith Abraham, when he was called to go out to inherit a land which he should after receive for an inheritance, went out and he obeyed, not knowing whither he went. So the first step of salvation is described by St. Paul as being fulfilled in Abram. Abram was called. He was called. So St. Paul says, more of whom he did predestinate, them he also called. So he was called. Now, some number of years later, Abram is justified. So let's go ahead in the text and we'll go see what our Lord says. Genesis 15, the Locust Classic, was about justification by faith. So Abram had obeyed God for and sojourned for a period of time in Egypt, and then God appears to him in a vision. And he says in verse 1, After these things the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. And Abram said, Lord God, what wilt thou give me, seeing I go childless? And the steward of my house is this Eleazar of Damascus. And Abram said, Behold, to me you have given no seed, and lo, one born in my house is my heir. Verse 4, And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, This shall not be thine heir. But he that shall come forth out of thine old bowels shall be thine heir. And he brought him forth abroad and said, Look now toward heaven and tell the stars, if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, So shall thy seed be. Now, this is where Abraham was justified. And he, and, Ab, and he believed in the Lord and he counted it to him for righteousness. So, Genesis 12, Abram is called. Genesis 15, Abram is justified. Now, at this point, we ask ourselves, is glorification a future thing? Or is it a possibility here on earth? Well, there is a sense in which the earnest expectation of the creature waits for the manifestation of the sons of God. There will be the manifestation of the sons of God at the apocalypse, according to St. Paul. Romans chapter 8, verse 17 to 19. Actually, you can go later on and say really up to verse 23. But we are called to inherit even now as saints this glorification and we can experience this promise and really in uh, practice, in reality, pragmati, become saints, become what we are called to lay hold of. So let's go to the next passage. And here we see that Abram has his name changed to Abraham, and he also receives the promise. So in Genesis 22, if you want, turn with me to that passage. This is the temptation of Abram, to, uh, or Abraham now. And it says, and, and it came to pass after these times, after these things, that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here I am. And he said, Take now your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and get thee out of the land of Moriah, 
and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mounts, which I will tell thee of. And I won't go through the whole passage. It goes up until the middle of the chapter. The basic teaching is Abraham offers Isaac upon the altar. God says in verse um, 12 through the angel, and he said, Lay not your hand upon the lad, neither do anything unto him. For now I know that you fear God, seeing you have not withheld your son, thine only son, from me. And he said, By myself have I sworn, says the Lord, for because you have done this thing, and has not withheld your son, thine only son, that in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven, and as the sand which is upon the seashore, and in thy seed, and thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies, and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Why? Because thou hast obeyed my voice. Abram, it is my Abraham, it is my contention, at this point experienced glorification. He experienced the fullness of God's promise while he was still in the flesh, what we call in orthodoxy uh, theosis, or partaking of the divine nature. Now, even though he was an Old Testament saint, he could experience that. Um, how it differs from today, that's a mystery. Now, if we look at the parallel passage in Romans chap uh, Hebrews chapter 6, we have the explanation of inheriting the promise. So in Hebrews chapter 6, the Apostle Paul tells us, he exhorts us, be not slothful, 12, but be followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. When, and he's going to use the illustration of Abraham. Abraham inherited the promise in Genesis 22. God sealed that with him. Notice what he says. For when God made promise to Abraham, because he could swear by no greater, he swear by himself, saying, Surely blessing I will bless thee, and multiplying I will multiply thee. And so after he patiently endured, he obtained the promise. Now, he was called in Genesis 12. He was said to be specifically justified in uh, Romans chapter uh, 4, when he believed in Genesis 15, 6. So he, he was called, he was justified. They're two separate events. And he was glorified in Genesis 22. He received the promise while on earth. We know that when he received this promise, he had a spiritual revelation. Now, you have to connect the various disparate texts of the scripture and see this. So in John chapter 8, our Lord is dialoguing with the Jews, and he says, basically, I am that I am. He is Jehovah of the Old Testament. They accuse him, and he says, I seek not mine own glory, but there is one that seeks and judges. So in other words, there's a day when Jesus would be glorified, and Jesus is, saying, Jesus is going to explain when he's glorified. Verily, verily, I say unto you, if a man keep my saying, he shall never see death. Then said the Jews unto him, Now we know that thou hast a devil. Abraham is dead, and the prophets. And you say, if a man keep my saying, he shall never see death, taste of death. Are you greater than our father Abraham, which is dead, and the prophets are dead, whom you make yourself? Jesus answered, If I honor myself, my honor is nothing. It is my father that honors me, of whom you say he is your God. Now, he's going to describe when he's glorified in this next verse. You have not known him, but I know him. And if I should say I know him not, I shall be a liar like unto you. But I know him and keep his saying. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day. What does he mean, my day? The day when he's glorified. And he saw it and was glad. He saw that day when he offered up Isaac upon the altar. God glorified Jesus and he 
saw that glorification. Thus, in Genesis 22, we have, in a nutshell, theosis revealed to us. Abram is called in Genesis 12. He's justified in 15. He's glorified in 22. It is utterly biblical. It is utterly historical. This is what the church has always taught. And it is utterly verifiable by the lives of the saints. You see, this is what makes a saint. A saint is one who inherit, who has inherited in practice that promise that we are called to receive. This is the promise that he hath promised us even eternal life, and this life is in his Son. First, first John uh, 2.25. The promise of eternal life is experienced now in measure when we are illuminated. But you have an unction from the Holy One and you know all things. First John 2.20. And St. Paul tells us in Ephesians chapter 1, 12 through 14, in whom you also believed after that, in whom you also were sealed after that you believed, you received the Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession under the praise of his glory. And that redemption is the glorification of the body, but the Spirit can partake of that fullness even now. So I hope that answers a question. It, uh, without getting into further detail and showing the um, multitude of biblical parallels, I think this suffices and gives enough for a person to really chew on and say, you know, um, Abram was called, he was justified and glorified in the Old Testament. That's the process of becoming a saint, of becoming like Jesus, conformed to his image. And we can experience that even now. And so I encourage you to look at the lives of the saints because they, through 2,000 years and then the thousands of years before that in the Old Testament, followed the same pattern, the same threefold pattern of purification, illumination, and glorification or divinization. May we become one with him and glorified so that we can hear, well done thou good and faithful servant, and with the apostles on Mount Tabor, be transfigured from glory to glory. Amen.